Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, who here holds Bitcoin? Hand. Hand in the air. Hand in the air. What about ordinals? Who here owns an ordinal? Okay, we got some. What about runes? Runes tokens? Yeah, sorry. Sorry for those of you that uh, hold runes tokens. Uh, BRC20? Any BRC20s? Okay, fantastic. Uh, just wanted to do a really quick dive there because we are going to go a little bit deeper into meta protocols over the next hour. So it's my pleasure to introduce Nibu, who is the CTO of AstroX, uh, building the, the cross-chain smart contract wallet, Me, also the Atomicals wallet, an infrastructure product, uh, Wiz wallet, the social identity card printing product, Card3, and a new stealth meta protocol that they're working on right now. And is my mic cutting out? Or can you, can you hear me okay? Okay. Uh, a new stealth meta protocol that I think he'll talk more about later. So here, here he is. Thank you. Um, thank you, Bob. Yeah. Uh, for privacy issue, I have to cover my face. Thank you. So I'm going to talk about a little bit about uh, meta protocol. So the topic is meta protocol 2.0 which is, an, we think, is a new dawn of BTC. A quick introduction about uh, AstroS, who we are. Uh, we've been building on top of internal computers since gen network synthesis. Uh, we are grants and hackathon winner. Uh, Mi wallets, uh, which is a multi-chain cross-platform smart contract wallet. Car3, a web social project combining NFC and smart contract. Uh, last year, we started building with wallet, which is a Bitcoin wallet, uh, focusing on Meta protocol. So, a question is, are JPEGs and memes useful to Bitcoin? Uh, which is a common question about ordinals and all those Meta protocols. So, let me show you the data. Um, 2023 and 2024, um, you see the the color sign of the portion of those meta protocols uh, percentage of those transaction share and transaction fee share, which is already growing rapidly. So that's, I think, increasingly, you, I know, uh, I think maybe next year, it growing uh, more shares into the Bitcoin transaction. So how many of you know this meta protocol? Uh, this is the only a portion of it, only like 20. Actually, there are over 100 meta protocols existed in Bitcoin ecosystem. So what is meta protocol? Uh, from 1.0 thesis, uh, which have four, uh, you know, I, I think it's very important uh, characteristic uh, interest one is permissionless uh, with a single format. Uh, if you're familiar with BRC20, uh, which is use a JSON format uh, to in de describe a coin, a asset. And uh, they all issue issues on Bitcoin and use BTC as a main ledger, which is say when you transact a BRC20 or runes or other meta protocols, you need to spend some Bitcoin. And it is also a uh, viable characteristic that is tradable via PSBT, which is a very, very native uh, way to trade Bitcoin assets. Uh, multiple wallets and marketplaces will support this format, which is very, very important. So then what is Meta Protocol 2.0? I think we are moving to four categories of, of Meta Protocol 2.0. One, one is the programmabilities. And second, we have to bridge everything together. And three, we, you may use CK Prover or Verifier if you're going through all those like uh, uh, ZK zero knowledge proof solution for Meta Protocols. And four, which is very, very important that we might be using smart contract and state computation. Um, to, to do all those meta protocols, 2.0 things. So, what do we have on internal computer today? 
We have chain key and threshold signing, which is Sam already mentioned it. We have on-chain BTC data availability, which is say we use like Bitcoin native API to show the data and verify on-chain. We have identity-based smart contract, which is you authorize some smart contract to do some stuff using your own identity. Uh, if you're familiar with internal computer, you might be using internet identity to do it. Before, we have a synchronizational scaling solution, uh, which is you can scale uh, your application with various, many, many canisters to do it. But why? Why? We haven't seen the real value capture on IC. I think this is the most important thing and most critical question to ICP ecosystem. I think, therefore, Questions might be the possible reasons. One, is this price move performance of ICP? And second, is security assumption and tech adoptions? Three, community and ecosystem dying? And four, is a marketing issue? What 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 is your what is your answers? I think for, for the first one, I think it's a chicken and egg problem. Because when you see the price movement, you're gonna see, you, you may predict the ecosystem is dying and produce many, many more assumptions. I think it's not really the price performance because when you grow, when you, you know, capture the value, the price performance will be much, much better. So it's a chicken and egg problem. And the second one about adoption and security assumption. Uh, if you really focus building on internet computer, you might notice there were reports last month by an independently analyzed about threshold signing. You would know the security assumption is there, but we have to win and then we prove the security along, and it's good. I think the review is very, very good. So the, th the third question is ecosystem is dying? No, we are here. So ecosystem will find the best way to survive and support the intercomputer. And for marketing, it depends on all these things above. So when we solve the first three things, and then we might pursue and find out which way of the best way of marketing. So how does chain fusion embrace the Meta Protocol 2.0, and what if, what if, one, the Meta Protocol co-lives on BTC and in the computer? What if? Because right now all those Meta Protocols are live on BTC, not on any other network, on chain, right? What if we have a protocol co-lives on BTC and IC. And second, the people use BTC wallet and use BTC address only to interact with internet computer. Because today, if you know internet computer, you, you know something, the address is different from other chain, right? Principal ID, right? It's different. What if we can use BTC wallet and address as the primary address for BTC people to interact with the computer. The third is smart contracts can enable the computation and BTC DeFi, which is very, very important uh, because I'm from East Asia. Asia used to always chase hypothetically from DeFi projects, so they love BTC DeFi. And the fourth question is, if we have the threshold signing, it happens only when we bridging assets, not by default. Because when you want to bridge assets, you have to some send something to some address, right? You have to send assets to some address, which is very, very critical for people to decide how is the address safely secure, right? If I send the, the my BDC to some cancel control address, I might get some 
question you might you have to answer is the address secure by the inner computer i don't know so when you want to bridge assets you have to think carefully the fourth the fifth is we if the if we can help him more purchase on icp to bdc so i'm going to introduce a new way to do it which is a rainbow protocol we've been building rainbow protocol will be allowing you to issue Bitcoin native assets, which is secure by BTC, just like big BRC20, Ordinals, Atomicals, and any other meta protocols. The second, we use smart contract to enable this virtual machine for the BTC. The third, we use access teleport, which is no bridge, no multisig, no threshold signing, and people would don't have security assumption on top of that. The fifth, the next one is smart contract in, will be enable the DeFi and Web3 applications on BDC. So here's the architect. Will be a little more technical. From the left side is a Bitcoin blockchain, and we index. And we decode all those transactions into UTSO decoded parameters. And then we ship them to the system component, which is index of validator and account objection and execution environment, which is canister best. We use Bitcoin SPV using ICP subnet to manage all those ledger and state storage. The state storage and the ledger manager, we hold all and manage all those ledger, token ledgers. So we use ICP as subnet to spawn all those ledger canisters to serve all those things from Bitcoin blockchain. Okay. Okay. So the protocol comparison, I think I just stated, and you'll be able to see on the document where I use simple formats like inscription to define all those coins. And the testnet is live. You can check and use the testnet to see how, how it's going. We use Bitcoin wallet to sign in, which is signing with Bitcoin today. And you can stake your PDC through your wallet, not everyone else, to get rewards from the tokens. Here is the token list I try to deploy on the testnet. And you can mint it, free mint, or you can list all those things, just like a PSVT market, if you use Magic Eden or other marketplace on Bitcoin. And please allow me to play a little bit video from telling you the asset teleport. When we send transaction from our layer two, which is big, which is Rainbow Network, back to BTC, what you, do you expect? A block confirmation? No. No. In seconds. Three, two, one seconds. Refresh. And it's done. From layer two to layer one, teleportation, which is coming through only on ICP ledger. Okay. Can you switch back. Yes. Okay. What we need? We need fundraise, and we need to keep building. Talk to us. Thank you. And uh, give you back, Bob. Yeah. 